This Excel sheet helps you calculate the required bollard pull for towing a ship-shaped vessel, using a tug. What it basically does is it calculates all the forces which the ship is going to experience while being towed, and dividing these forces by the towing efficiency, gives us the required bollard pull for the tug to be selected. Now, what are these forces on the ship? The forces on the ship are, the first one is the calm water resistance of the ship, which is the resistance which the ship is going to experience when it is being towed just in calm water, which means no environmental forces. But during an actual tow, the ship also experiences the environmental forces like the wind and the wave. This Excel sheet, apart from the calm water resistance, it also calculates the wind resistance, the wave drift force which is the additional force due to the sea waves coming onto the vessel. And then it also calculates the propeller resistance, and the hawser resistance to give the total force on the ship. Once we have the total force, we just divide it by the towing efficiency of the tug to get the required bollard pull. All these calculations are being done using proper references from reliable sources. The calm water resistance is calculated using the whole drop and menon method. The wind resistance is calculated from ABS, and the wave drift forces are calculated from DNV. The propeller resistance and the hawser resistance are from the US Navy towing manual. So let's take a tour of this Excel sheet and see how it calculates the different components of the forces. To begin with, the inputs of the vessel are required. Here, quite a lot of inputs are required to calculate the calm water resistance for the ship. So we have the principal dimensions of the vessel, and then floating status which gives the draft and the trim, and then the coefficients, like the block coefficient, the midship section coefficient, and the water plane coefficient. Then the bow shape and the stern shape, these are also required. Then the wetted surface area, the propeller area, all these are inputs which are required from the user for the vessel. Now in many of the inputs, default values coming from a formula have been mentioned. So the user can choose either the default value, or if he has the correct value then he can just input the correct value. Say for example if the user doesn't have the value for the wetted surface area, there is an empirical formula which can be used to calculate the wetted surface area. On say the inputs for the vessel are done, we can go to the next Excel sheet which is the inputs for the cargo and the environment. So the cargo dimensions and the shape coefficient of the cargo, then the wind speed and the direction of the wind, current speed, the significant wave height, and the peak wave period all these are required in the inputs. The third kind of input required is the geometry of the appendages. So any appendages on the vessel, like the rudder, the shafts, the skeg, hull bossings etc., the area of all these appendages also goes as an input while calculating the appendage resistance as part of the calm water resistance. Once these three kinds of inputs have been given by the user, the inputs for the vessel, cargo and environment, and the appendages, the user doesn't need to do anything after giving the inputs. The Excel sheet is going to calculate all the different components of the forces. So the first worksheet is for calm water resistance which calculates all the different components, the frictional resistance, then the appendage resistance, the wave resistance etc. So all these are calculated, and together they form the calm water resistance. This is how the total calm water resistance of the vessel is calculated. Next, the wind loads on the cargo are calculated from the hull windage area and the cargo windage area. These areas are factored for different height coefficients as per ABS, and also the shape coefficients are taken into account. Next is the wave drift calculation which is done according to DNV recommended practice, RP, H103, and based on the significant wave height and the shape of the bow of the vessel, the wave drift force is calculated. Now since the tow is moving with a forward vessel speed, 
so an additional factor has been included to take into account the effect of the forward vessel speed on the wave drift force. After this we have the propeller resistance which is calculated in accordance with the US Navy towing manual, and then once these forces are calculated, we just sum them up in the final forces and we add a 10% allowance for the hawser resistance in accordance with the US Navy towing manual. So all the total forces including the hawser force have been calculated. Then the final required bollard pull is calculated by dividing the total force by the towing efficiency, which gives the final required bollard pull. So that was a tour of this Excel sheet which helps you calculate the required bollard pull for a ship-shaped vessel. Thank you.